Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM24 Youth Factory, episode 58. Awaiting our senior team's final match of the season with the title on the line. Meanwhile, our U18s, after finishing second in the regular season, made the playoff. There's two divisions, top two from each, so top four. Make a semifinal for who is the actual winner of the division. We won the semifinal, and we won the final. We beat Hull, who was first in our league. We were second in our league. We both beat the other two division uh, top two uh, teams in the semis. Wright, Fletcher, Bottle, Roberts, Twinecliffe, Jones, Green all had very, very strong games. Let's see the key highlights, the goals. Aviston down the wing on the left. We lay it off, bring it back into the box after Wright retreats uh, from the line. He turns and puts that first one in. Fletcher to bottle bottle just squeezing that in under the bar looks like it might have even caught a piece of it hole is going to get one back on the counter o'hara to the far post matthews nothing he can do really on that one uh, jones twinecliffe for the third goal fletcher finishes that one off after cutting inside jones reverses and crosses but they clear it away only partially and bottle gets his second both of them from the head Good finish there, and well done. Well deserved. 1.99 on the XG to a .86 goal. The, the, the score line didn't quite reflect the game, but the outcome certainly did. We we should have won either way. 2-1, to 3-1 to one maybe. 4-1 to one seemed a little harsh for them, but it's still a very good performance, and that is champions for the U18s. Can we replicate it with the senior squad? We're a few days away to find out. Barnsley have had an easy run of games to end the season. And they have dropped points, but not much. We, on the other hand, have had a difficult final handful of matches. Despite that, there is no excuse if we don't come away with a win today. It's Plymouth. They're fourth. We're on the road. You could make excuses today but we've had too many chances too many opportunities to come away the real trouble boy that looked harsh the real trouble that we've been facing is the age of our group it's a bunch of teenagers or very early 20 somethings there's only a couple of older players on this roster mid 20s as in Oh, that is so close. Marshall tips that one wide. It looks like we might have had a chance to tip it in. Barnsley's already up. 11th minute, Ed Murphy on the score sheet. They've got a very easy match in Wigan, and that now puts them in the driver's seat for the title. We must treat it that they will hang on. Like I said, they have an easy game today. They've had nothing but easy games lately. They have had a very easy end-of-season schedule. Barnsley was not the team that we were going head-to-head -head with. They were the team that snuck up on us, came out of nowhere, found themselves in form, and they have stayed in form. Yes, they've dropped those points, but just not not much. And they've been only breathing down our neck for the last few games, but we have been very poor. Very, very poor here late in the season. Yes, we have promotion. It is secured, but the title... Everything comes down to the performance today. This is our best chance so far. Wilkinson inside. Jones gets a chance. Goal kick. Goal kick. For a second, I thought they had called it offside, which I was very confused by. They had not. It was just the goal kick. We have not managed to put anything on target yet, but we have amassed some shots. I am attacking. I have converted a couple guys to more attacking roles, but we get to halftime Certainly the better team, but we get to halftime still goalless and still with it all to play for in the second half. So we start the second half. No changes. We've been the better team. We've got a chance here. We've got a real chance. But can we carry on? Can we keep the momentum? And can we actually put together a decent chance? McFadden loses out on that one. Cleared to Ward. We get it back in. Webb. Then again. Now to McCartney. McFadden has been pretty weak in possession. Out of Kunle. Hassel. We've not been 
going for the killer ball just yet. That's a really poor giveaway, but luckily Hawkridge absolutely blows the chance. Okay, time to increase tempo. And let's get into those underlaps. Try to change it up a little bit. Uh, we're also, I think we've got to go for it. We have got to go for the win. So we're going to push up a bit more. We have no yellows. So we're going to go ahead and get stuck in. Their pace is okay. Pace is definitely just okay. Uh, their striker is decently fast. What is my pace for my defensive line, especially my center backs? Webb can just about keep up with them. So can Hassel. Almost. And it's time. Finally back from injury. Sam Lines has been gone a long, long time. But he is available for 45 today. And we have about that left. A draw will not do. A win may not be enough as... Uh, there's only a one goal differential, and wow, Julian perfectly placed there. Quick reaction. Barnsley's up 3-0. We need at least two goals. Getting ahead would still see a second. Very attacking. Be more expressive. We need to start countering. Corner, Atacunle, Webb, Ward. I haven't seen a score off of a corner kick in how long? We need to change the formation. Lines get stuck in. What a play. Atacunle cuts inside, beats his man, pulls it back for Jones. Lines off the post. Oh, so close. Let's see what happens with this free kick. We're fine. We're fine. Uh... We need to change this up. Ward. Complete wing back on attack. McFadden. We'll think about the changes here soon. Subwise. Julian comes out, clutches that one. We are running out of time. We need really two goals, not just one. Three points will not be enough. Wilkinson, nice first touch. Takes it all the way to the byline, crosses. Glenn Ian Penrice goes back to Ward. Inside the lines, lines, it's blocked. Ward cuts in, good cut. Blocked again, Wilkinson. Oh, good tackle. Wigan has gotten one back. It's 3-1. It's only a plus two. One goal would make us level on the goal differential. I have no idea who would, what, coin toss? I don't know what the difference would be. One goal might be enough. Lanahan Penrys. Jones! <sighs> uh, uh, do I have any subs? I could get more attacking players. McFadden's having a terrible day. Let's... Uh, what What can we do? What can we do? Can Ward push up? No. McFadden needs to just get out of there. We need to get another... Like Phil Hewitt on for McFadden. And we need to get him up on top. Never mind the pressing forward. Too advanced. No, be a poacher. Be a poacher, Lanahan Penries. Be a poacher. You've got guys all over the place to help you out. McCartney, push up. One goal could do it. Could. Stoppage time. We've, we've got a minute. It just ticked off 20 minutes. 20 minutes just disappeared from this game in an instant. Watson. Second chance. Hawkridge scores. And we're going to finish second place this season. We threw everything at them and could not get a goal. Everything here down the stretch. Problem with our team. Because we're going to lose this one, and that's, that's it. The, the game didn't matter as we couldn't drop outside of the top two. It was all about getting the win. But 
what sets us apart is the mentality and the young age of our group. And they just can't see out seasons very well. We've squeezed out a couple titles in that last handful of years because others helped us. Barnsley didn't. Barnsley did not help us out. They did what they needed to do. And we? We didn't. We threw everything at them today. We had a goal worth of XG. Managed to get four shots on target. Plymouth is a good team. They were tough to break down. Remember, this year, we went from barely surviving relegation a year ago to all of a sudden, hey, we're getting promoted. And we are. We're getting promoted. That's still happening. But we lost the title. Did we really shoot ourselves in the foot? Yes. And no. It was a tough stretch. Final four games were all very, very difficult games, but one point out of four games? Terrible. This one easily could have finished nil-nil. Uh, we were literally throwing everything at them at the end for that goal. Didn't come. They get that stoppage time winner in the final seconds. They never looked like they were going to get that. Uh, almost all of their XG came from that play uh, right there at the end. Loss or draw, really very little difference in that. We had to go for the win, and we did. But didn't. One point in the final four, atrocious. Absolutely terrible finish the season. But we had a horrible final four games schedule. Incredibly difficult for a young squad with the pressure on who was never expected to be anywhere near the playoff zone this season. It was all about just getting stability mid-table. I knew we were going to be better than that. Did not think we were going to be anywhere near the playoff zone, though. I really thought we would be six, seven points out of the playoff zone and just, you know, slightly upper mid-table after the season we had a year ago. Either way, we're getting promoted. Either way, we're facing tougher competition and tougher pressure, and it's going to be harder to stay up. Doesn't make much of a difference here, but I was really hoping for some trophies this season and we had two chances at a trophy very late in this season and blew both of them that part's disappointing but we'll endure we'll survive we'll move on i should be keeping everybody yes i have my two expiring contracts that would leave if not for the minimum security but per the rules of this series we're going to be able to hang on to those guys for next year that was disappointing, but we're not going to do anything here. Like, they were never predicted to do this. So Barnsley wins the title on the final day. They end up with that plus 52. If we don't give up that goal in the final seconds. We're at plus 51. If we score that goal in the final seconds instead of them, we're at plus 52. Same on points. What was our head-to-head -head with Barnsley this season? Let's, let's find that out real quick. I don't know what... I, I need to know what the tiebreaker is for this league first. Let's 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 start with that. League sorting rules. Goal difference is first. Goals scored is second. Then results between team. Possession, we were only 10th at 50%. Like None of this suggests we should have done what we did. Headers won 17th in the league. Ratio 15th in the league. Yellow cards, we were 5th most in the league. We're always high on this chart. 4th. Uh, second, actually, in red cards with four. Yeah, Barnsley down the stretch. Five wins in a row, at least. Oh, that's home form. Five wins in a row at home. Away, a little bit mixed. Overall form, yeah, they did drop some points here and there. But our, our form, 17th at home. Our away form, 7th. We've been more consistent on the road than we've been at home. Barnsley was third. Four games in a row without scoring. One nil, nil draw. Or actually five without a win. Five in a row without a win. Awful. Awful finish this season. I mean, we literally threw everything at these guys and still could not get the ball in the back of the net. We changed tactics. We, we did all sorts of things. They, The players just really could not handle the pressure. So clear. So obvious on that part. All right. Here we go. Goals. Barnsley had the tiebreaker. They had 99. We had 91. Barnsley had the tiebreaker. Even if we got that last second goal, we still lose the championship. They steal. They still steal it away from us, regardless. Does that make it easier? Does that make it better that we didn't? 
get the last second goal. Expected goals over performance. Barnsley was nine goals over. We were 3.96. We pretty much did what we were supposed to do this season. 87 XG, 91 goals. They had 89 XG, neck and neck. Swansea actually had the highest expected goals for. They scored 92 and they're seventh in the league. When you take away the penalties, we're even closer. Exactly one behind. We actually took 11 penalties this season. I'm surprised by that. Uh, we scored eight of them. Marsley took the most, 13, scored 10. Cross completion, 19th in the league, 13%. Crosses completed was 16th overall. Goals from corners, five. Five goals from corners. I still, still cannot hire a goal, uh, set piece coach. Like, nobody wants the job. Nobody freaking wants the job, or at least not for a team with our reputation. Goals from direct free kicks, one this season. Four from indirect free kicks. Pass completion, seventh at 84%. Overall passes completed is eighth. Chances created, seventh. You know, the fact that we got the XG that we got when we're only here, fewer chances. Like, and, and you're looking at, you know, who are we behind? The biggest teams with the biggest payrolls doing what they're supposed to do. We really, despite the terrible finish, right, if you ignore that part, and if you just look at the season at a whole, we punched way above our weight. We did way more than we were supposed to do. Again, still doesn't make that end of season feel much better, but a little. Shots for Barnsley, 700. We had 600. 100 shots less. On target, tied for 7th, 259. 42% on target, mid-table. Conversion rate, 15% is 7th. Shots per game is 7th. Fouls against, 7th. It's an unusual place for us to be, drawing a lot of fouls. Not used to getting that. Uh, dribbles made, 5th, 582. Possession lost, 11th. Not bad. High intensity sprints, that's... That's where we are number one. That's where we're a clear number one. We put the work in. Final third, passes per game. Seventh. Seems to be about our home. We're, we're not leading in anything. But defense. Defense is where we have dominated this season. Number one defense in the league. Barnsley was number two. Now they were well ahead of Preston as well, who was number three. And Wrexham was number five. Uh, Plymouth. The next one, tie or one off Doncaster for the next one is fourth. So, yeah, top five were in the top six positions when it comes to defense, and we led the way by by a good margin on that one. We were still in the all but one of those games down the stretch because we have very good defense. We only gave up forty one, and we played forty six. We gave up less than a goal a game. Fantastic defense. We were the only ones in the league to be under one goal per game. There was a lot of teams over two goals per game. Quite a few, anyway. Expected goals against. Not number one. 21st. So technically fourth. 55.77. And we only gave up 41. Our defense took away a whole lot of XG. Even then, we still played really good defense, regardless of eliminating a lot of XG. Corners conceded four. Direct free kicks, not one given up. Indirect free kick, just one. So as bad as we are at scoring on set pieces, we're not giving up hardly anything on set pieces. Shutouts, first, 20. Almost half of our games played. Fouls made, third most. Tackles one. Eighth percentage, just 18th at 76%. It's pretty close to everybody except for Doncaster, really above the rest. Blocks, 22nd in blocks, 196, right near the bottom of the league. 100 behind the best. Possession one, 12th, 5,000 times. 5,000 clearances, 17th. Interceptions. There's one of our stronger areas. Third. Penalties conceded. Nine. We had ten. No. Eleven. Conceded nine. 
got 11. We were plus 2 on that. We converted 8. I don't know how many of those we actually gave up. Shots against? Third best. So we, we did face more shots than some of the other teams, even though we had less goals. Having a good goalkeeper certainly helped us. Shots on target against, again, fourth. Passes attempted against, 13th. Passes completed, 12th. Op uh, opposition passes per defensive action. Way down at 18th. We let them do some passes, but then apparently we, we cut in and intercepted well. Or just had a goalkeeper who was fantastic. A lot of it was we just forced them into bad shots a lot of the time. They didn't accumulate much XG as we were what, fourth best there, right? Final third passes against... See? Haha! -ha! What was I just saying? We might give up a lot of passes, but we stop the important ones. Final third passes against per game was just 55, right near the top of the standings. Headers lost, 15th. Headers lost per game, of course, the same, but 34 per game. The average attendance, we know this one's bad. 18,000 at the top of the league, 6,500 for us. Definitely not last, but only 16th. Average attendance by capacity, 21st, 41%. Sellouts, not a, not one. Highest attendance. 14,000, 11th best. That was probably opening day, right? New stadium. Lowest, 7th, 7th lowest. Net transfer spend, always a big one. Wrexham spent over a million dollars, as did Salford City. And then it drops off from there. And you already start getting into making money. And we were amongst those who made money with a 2 million dollar net uh, earn but Preston made 15 million as they came down Barnsley was right there with us though but here's that big one the salary we are 19th in the league with 2.79 million in salary it's not last it's not far from it but above us we were at 2.79 right after FC Halifax things really take off 5 million for the next handful of teams and then We'll round that up for Barnes Barnsley. Barnsley. Basically eight million to our two point eight. Huge gap. Huge gap between us. But Sulfur, nine. Wigan nine. Rotterdam nine. Wrexham eleven. Twelve for Plymouth. Fourteen for Preston. Fifteen and a half for Swansea. Jeez. Well, we are headed to the championship. This is gonna help us and hurt us in a couple of ways. One we're going to have to start paying players more. But two, we should be earning a greater amount in sponsorship deals in the coming year. We should be putting more butts in seats as we're going to be playing in the championship. We should make better money, and we're not going to instantly have huge pay raises. But I would imagine there's plenty of clauses for 10 15% more in salary, but 10% more of 2.8, another 280000 I think we're going to be making a lot more than an extra... 280,000. That's 10%. We're adding in, you know, 15. We're looking more along the lines of an extra 400,000, roughly. So maybe 3.2 would be the expected. But again, we should be making a lot more additional income in the coming year. But we could find things difficult because Sam Julian is good for the championship. And Adekunle and Wilkinson. And then a handful of guys that are going to be okay but this is going to look a bit like last season did. I think we're a little better off than we were that last time, but not by much. Not by much. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be a big ask to survive in the championship. It's going to be a huge ask to get players good enough to get to the Premier League at, at one point, all happening internally. This is a big step. I've done this series quite a few times uh, over the years. And we've never gotten this far. We've never gotten this far. I think the the highest I've ever gotten was League Two. So now heading to the championship is uh, massive. And we are on the cusp. Problem is, is we have some real limitations on what we can do. We're going to really have to get the most out of the players we have. Fingers crossed, we're 
kind of done losing players and really all we're going to start getting into is more of like oh Rusini's 105 out of 111 he's going to get to like a 108 but that's his limit and we're going to find somebody else who's in 86 132 and soon after in you know a year's time he's Nash Rusini and replaced Rusini and then progresses further and then you know Granger comes along soon after uh, to make another player I think that's that's kind of what we're in for the next phase is replacing your Koulibaly's and Red Knapp's entirely out of the senior squad the Rusinis and replacing them with more guys who can be starters who can be good enough who can get to championship quality and once we have enough of that squad eventually it'll get us to the Premier League I have no idea what we're in for though in terms of timetable anymore it took us two years two years to get out of League One we barely survived the first season by year two we go up is it a two-year project for the championship? Are we going to develop that fast yet again because of the the increase in level and competition and we have players with potential? Play at the higher level. Club reputation continues to grow. We make improvements to training facilities. Blah, 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 blah. It all adds up and we continue to progress. Here's the thing, though. Training facilities are great. Three and a half stars. I think we're kind of getting into the championship level of yeah, a lot of them have that or more what we still have is that youth intake piece and we're going to continue to get a couple good players every year but what we don't have is any sort of guaranteed path now i think to that last step to that premier league and beyond right to, to get up into the europe places and and be competitive man whew, this this is a lot folks this is a lot and i'm surprised and not we are up to a two-star regional reputation now though it is catching up. We were still a one and a half, one star or one and a half star, whatever it was. We are growing in reputation, and it's making a difference in a few ways, right? For one, contracts. Atacunle is sixteen and a half million now. Archie Jones is ten and a half million for their value. Penrice eight point six, nine million for Plain, simply because he's going to. A championship side. Who does he belong to now? Darby. I'm assuming that Darby's in the championship and have been for a long time. Sixth this year. We're going to be playing against them next year. We're going to be playing against Plain. Though I don't think we're going to be playing against Plain. My guess is he's going to be in their reserves. But here's a good example of what we're facing in the championship. Superb trade facilities. Excellent youth facilities. Finances that are okay and a reputation that's national. We are not there, but they do have a negative balance. They do have issues. They lost a ton of money, but they're going to get sponsorships and find a way to, you know, rebound some of that, I, I would assume. Still one game to go in the championship on the current season with Middlesbrough already having won the championship and Huddersfield all headed, or both headed, well, Huddersfield has not guaranteed that. Uh, they are not headed to the Premier League yet. Stoke is level, just a few goals behind, and Blackburn still has a chance for that automatic promotion spot. And then, of course, any of these four. Uh, Watford still has a chance. Crystal Palace still has mm, a near-impossible chance, 0.1% chance. But Watford could still overtake Burnley for that last promotion spot. But we're looking this group, Crystal Palace, a couple of smaller... Well, I mean, Ipswich is not a small team. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they are not a small team. Uh, but this is your usual championship kind of sides. Like none of these are surprises up here. We have a partnership with Coventry that's about to end. Uh, but as for the relegation, Luton Town, Peterborough United both going down. And right now it's Cardiff. It's Cardiff on the way out unless they can get a win and Lincoln loses or draws. Uh, and Cardiff, you know, win by less than a couple goals. Or I suppose less than three, right? Coventry, not safe at this point but pretty dang close to it plan for next year is to attempt to avoid relegation that's just where they've got us placed absolutely in the bottom three and big time and that's going to be really important for them catching back up Middlesbrough win the title Huddersfield take second for the automatic promotion spot with Stoke Blackburn Burnley and Hull the four teams all 80 plus points 
four very good teams that are all going to vie for the final spot uh, on the way towards the Premier League. While it's Cardiff, Peterborough United, and Luton Town that are going down, they did end up getting the win. But Lincoln still had the goal differential advantage by a couple goals in the end, and our link with Coventry will get severed here as we're going to be playing in the same league. We're moving up to the 18th best league in all of Europe now. It's a big step. It's going to get tough from here. It's going to get really tough from here. Uh, the championship is an absolute bloodbath. And I'm not sure we are suited to uh, stay in there. We we actually could yo-yo and go down. Premier League, not quite done with their season, but Everton, Sunderland, and Sheffield United have all been relegated already, well behind Norwich City ahead of them. Leeds United, a surprise up in sixth with Arsenal fifth. Tottenham uh, has already qualified for the Europa Conference League somehow. Newcastle United would be disappointing to be down in eighth here. I don't know, should Man United be happy with fourth? <laughs> it depends on your opinion, right? Um, well, a lot of people wouldn't be happy with them. I know they're the, the, the one that everybody hates, loves to hate on. So I don't know why it's not Man City. Most of it, well, I think Man City's taken over that reign. But right now, it is level on points. Only goal differential between Man City and Chelsea, but neither one's good. Got a roof for Liverpool, right? But they've played one more, and they're a point behind. By the way, past winners, four years, four years in a row without a title for Man City. And while Erling Holland might be up there on the list, it's Tim Penfold of West Ham. We know he's got some really good attributes, but 27-year-old Tim Penfold is the golden boot leader in the Premier League. He's got 44 goals and 79 appearances over three years with West Ham. Well, we definitely took some big losses this year. Five million. We did do a new training facility. That was some of those losses, but we took some definite losses this year. We're having trouble keeping up with the expenses of the level at which we're playing at. Uh, next year is going to be a big ask on that one. And what is... We should be looking, I think... Yeah, corporate facilities are a 17, much higher in the new stadium than what it had been previously. We should be seeing sponsorships coming in because that was at a 10 before. And I think when we moved to those others, it was even lower. And we do not have much when it comes to, yeah, sponsorships. Our main kit, 135000 certainly not nothing. Uh, and that just started this year. It was one... Yeah, just a one-year deal. I think this is an area where we're going to see some real changes, but a couple general sponsors for 13 k and one main kit sponsor. I mean, that's nothing. We have no stadium sponsor. This this is a big black hole. And with those better corporate facilities, I would think we are in position and with the growing reputation and the visibility of the championship uh, and the jump to that. We could be in for a big set of additional sponsorships. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Nikathalon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.